Welcome, everybody, to the NAACP Candidate Forum of the Kansas City, Missouri School District. The NAACP makes no endorsements on any level of information, organization, in this case, only. My name is Michael Downing. I'm the interim chair of the NAACP KCMO's Political Action Committee, filling in for our leader, Mr. Eugene Stanford, who is actually hopefully going to be back from rehab to us soon. Our moderator, Patricia Hartman, Alice Slav, and Anthony White, we have you, social services, and education represented in our moderator. Our president is Anita Russell. There she is. We will address you later. The candidates will introduce themselves. Uh, if you're not here to listen to me, I'll let the moderator take over now. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Rosa James is our timekeeper. <laughs> and also on our committee, we have the boss lady, which is my wife, <laughs> <laughs> Anne Marie Jackson, and let's see, we have any other committee members in here? No. Okay, so I'm going to say something. Let me know the time for each of the questions. And what I will do is when we get to 30 seconds, I will put this card up. And, and uh, when it's time to stop, we don't want any sermons, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I hate to want to preach can I take them off? <laughs> I'll save them. <laughs> okay, as an educator, I'm going to say we have quite a few teachers here, so they're taking over. So I think I was going to say that's already been said. <laughs> Um, first, I want to say also again, thank you everybody for coming out and taking the time to time to stay with us this afternoon. Um, we're going to give a little bit about the uh, debate protocol right quick again. Uh, our time keeper, our time keeper, as we said, is uh, Rosa James, and each candidate will be given two minutes to give their uh, response. Um, after that, we will also give uh, the person a chance to uh, respond if they wish. You will be given white cards to uh, write questions from the audience, and they will be taken up and previewed by those people that are taking them, so we'll not have a duplication of the questions that are being answered. Um, we will switch asking the questions to different people, so the same will not be given all the love, okay? <laughs> okay, um, again, we will change the order of this question. Now, Mr. Anthony White will introduce the candidates and the chairs of the Thank you. The sub-district candidates are as follows. Arthur Benson, Jonathan Howe, Adam Scheiber, Dwayne Kelly, Demonte Rochester, Curtis Rogers, Candace Cohen, Lynette C. Smith, Brad Large candidate, and H. Lon Swearingen. Now the first question in order. Arthur Benson, what do you believe is the role of the school board? Second. Okay, I'll start again. Dwayne Kelly, what do you believe is the role of a school board member? Two minutes. Yeah, it should be. According to law, we run the district in actual practice. Superintendent has set up now that we don't what they do is what they want done and how they do it is stand up so loud. Not so much stand up, but loud. We don't have the ability to call nine people or ten people. Okay. Uh, according to all the school board is from the district, they're they're responsible. Um, as we run it right now, we tell the superintendent, our hired man, what we want done, and that's that, up to him and the staff. Um, 
that's that's about it. Uh, the members, in my opinion, should cooperate more than they do, but cooperate. And uh, there's discussion, decisions are made on it that way. Okay. Okay. Curtis. Oh, also, Boy Kelly, can you tell a little bit about yourself? Graduated from West Point in uh, 52, went to the University of Missouri, got a degree in 57, and master's in 59, went back for another year. Took classes about another eight or nine of the school. Taught um, two years in attendance, came to Kansas City in the fall of 62 and thought until I retired in 93. Thank you. Next person is Curtis Rogers. Please tell about yourself and also what do you believe is the role of a school board member? Same question. Good evening. Good evening. I think the role of the school board member is to make, is to, um, is to uh, not not to micromanage, but to make sure that policy are carried out. I think too often we've had school board members that have probably interfered. But the role is to not micromanage, but, but to make sure that policy is implemented. Also, I think the role of the school board members to to make sure that his district is informed, to keep them informed. Uh, to be available to answer questions uh, from the district in which you serve. Also, to, to get out into the community, uh, make yourself known, and be able to answer any questions that may come up. A little bit about my background. I'm a native Kansas Citizen. I attended schools here in Kansas City. My fifth grade teacher is sitting in front of me. <laughs> Dr. Hill. I graduated from Lincoln High School, finished college, came back and taught at Lincoln. I served nine years as assistant, assistant principal at Southeast, and I finished my final 22 years as uh, principal at Fairview Alternative School. And that alternative school is one of the outstanding schools, not only in Missouri, but in the Midwest. I've also been actively engaged in my community. Uh, I'm president of the Sheraton Estates Neighborhood Association. And then lastly, uh, I'm still a trustee on our retirement board. A few years ago, I was the chairman of that board, and this is the board that administers $800 million. Candace Coburn, please tell about yourself and the same question. What do you believe is the role of a school board member? Thank you. My name is Candace Coburn. I'm running for a fifth sub district. I believe running or a board member is the two following. One, we are to govern over the school district, but as well, we are supposed to engage. Engaging parents, engaging students, engaging teachers, engaging the community. It is my goal when I'm a board member to go out into the community, to communicate with the neighborhood associations as I have been over the last few years. I am as well a part of my neighborhood association. I've been a part of the district advisory committee, which is the district-wide parent group. I've helped support the parents throughout this district from the time I even got in to get involved. I became involved in the school district and the issues that are going on via my family. They go to the African Center Schools, and there I served on the Ajuma Parent Board in 2008 and 2009. At that time, I learned there were a lot of issues that parents weren't able to get out um, to understand what was going on, and so I became that advocate, that voice, and went on to the DAC to serve for parents. Thank you. Next person for our at-large candidates, Lynette C. Smith. Please tell about yourself. And what do you believe is the role of a school board member? Good evening, all. I'd first like to say all praise to God for allowing me to be here. Um, my name is Lynette C. Smith. I'm a wife and a mother of six. The one daughter that's in college, five sons that are sitting back there. I am a, a parent in the Kansas City, Missouri School District, but also one parent who has always been actively involved. Um, I've been involved in so many things, it's too numerous to count, but most of the time I was the secretary of the staff for Glen Pine, for um, other schools that my kids attended. I, I know that the role of the school board, number one, is to support the superintendent. That's the first thing. When you're a governing body, you're not supposed to micromanage. In that, you have to make sure 
that keep that policy in place for the students and the board to be successful as a whole. You have to make sure you support the uh, superintendent. You have to make sure that the policy you set is for the future success of the board. You cannot set policy that's vague and does not help our children. That's one of the things I stand on if I'm elected for the Kansas Missouri School Board, is that I will look at revamping the policy because right now the policy is not where it needs to be. And with it the way it is currently, we will not regain a great Thank you. Next at large candidate is Lawrence Swear. Please tell about yourself and what is the role, what do you believe the role of the school board? I'm Long Swearingen. I have taught at this, the district for 11 years at Central High School. I have 25 years of experience. I've also been the past president of the whole person, which is the Center for Independent Living. And that was a governance board. And that's what this board is, a policy governance board. The CEO or the superintendent is in charge. The idea is, is, is the board is to oversee what is going on and making sure that the policy is being enforced. Now, it can be changed. There should be strategic planning for the future of this district because I believe it has a great future going on. I think the crisis has caused us to take a look at it and make it a better place. But the real issue is, is that the board has to leave the superintendent to do his job or her job if they want this thing to work. I truly believe one of the reasons we went through so many superintendents is very simple. Not minor, minor or micromanaging, but actually managing instead of letting the superintendent do it. Okay. Move on to Nia Webster. Please tell about yourself and what do you believe is the role of the school board member. You're at large. So, Nia Webster. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the board is in place to set policy. And more importantly, when you're on the board, it is the job of the board to set out the bold vision <coughs> of what the district should be doing. For example, I have this bold vision to say we should create world-class schools. And if we create world-class schools, and even if we don't get there, the worst that we could possibly do is create excellent schools. And kind of going back to what you were saying about the micromanagement and the things of that sort, the board has one employee, which is the superintendent. So it is the board's job to manage the superintendent, and it is the administration's job to execute the policy of the board. A little bit about myself is I was born and raised in the fifth district. I went to school at Pinkerton, graduated from Lincoln, uh, went off to school to Tennessee State University, studied abroad at the University of the Virgin Islands. And since I've come back home, I've come to see a lot of things that are going on in the community that I've been engaged in. I do have a history of engaging people around different issues in the community, you know, when it comes to racial or just even getting people out to vote. So I do have the experience of engaging people, as well as I serve on the Municipal Arts Board for the city, as well as the CDC Blue Hills Training Service Board. Thank you. Next at large candidate, Jerry Sargent, please tell about yourself and what is not Okay. Next one. Reverend Sam Mann, please tell about yourself and what do you believe is the role of a school board member? Thank you very much. Uh, the a school board member uh, has the responsibility to represent the community's uh, educational pursuits for its young people. His job is to hire basically the uh, superintendent of schools and then to set the policy uh, for that job description and for what that superintendent is going to do. And then it is to hold accountable the superintendent in those jobs and that policy. Uh, I am uh, been in Kansas City since 1966 and been the pastor of St. Mark's Church for 40 years, 
agency known as United Inner City Services. We have built a $5 million early childhood development center there on uh, 12th Street, as well as a $4 million, $4.5 million uh, housing development known as Parker Square. I've managed both of those uh, 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 entities uh, right there on 12th Street very successfully. Uh, the early childhood center has demonstrated to me the need for education at an early age, and uh, uh, we know that when, if you don't uh, uh, get those learning uh, habits started by five, it's very difficult to reclaim them. And I'm proud to say that the St. Mark Child and Family Development Center has been accredited by the state, has been accredited by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, and is a four-star out of five-star QRS uh, rated center, and uh, we stop. You can always complete your sentence, but don't make it a compound sentence. That's why she's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Vaughn is registered with the election board and confirmed with us. He just looks like you ask. Going back to sub district candidates. Starting with Dwayne Kelly. Dwayne Kelly, why are you running for the Kansas City School Board, and what skills do you bring to the position? I can help. I've been on the board 12 years. I was in the classroom in North East for 31. People are people. I can deal with people. I can cooperate. I had some ideas since I was there. Uh, I, can, I can make a difference. Okay. Next person, Demonte Rochester. Please tell about yourself and answer the questions. Why are you running for the Kansas City School Board? And what skills do you bring to the position? First of all, thanks for NFLCP for hosting this uh, forum for us tonight. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am Demonte Rochester. Uh, I've been a pioneer in this community for a long time. I've been a youth advocate in this community for a long time. And I bring to this uh, to this board good leadership, good ethics, and uh, we'll be the right person to lead this district where it needs to be. Thank you. Next person, Curtis Rogers. Please. Why are you running for the school, Kansas City School Board? And what skills do you bring to the position? I've run 36 years as a teacher, as an assistant principal, as an administrator. I think I bring experience and I bring leadership. But something else I think I bring. I talk. I know what good teaching is. I know what good instruction is. I've had to evaluate teachers, and so I know what that is. Um, I, I know what I know what a successful school looks like. I know what excellence within a school looks like because I've been there and I've done those sort of things. So I bring experience from as a teacher, as an assistant principal, as a principal, and have been successful in all three areas. So I think I bring leadership. And I think I bring experience. I think that's something that we really need at this critical time uh, in the school district. Thank you. Candace Coburn, why are you running for the Kansas City School Board, and what skills do you bring to the position? Two minutes. Thank you. I'm running for Kansas City School Board because I'm one of the many people who do not have children and who actually want to live in the city. 
I'm 25 years removed from this district. My parents made a decision in 1987 to move us out because of the issues that were going on then, and yet we're still here 25 years later. I do not want to have children, and then they go through it again in 25, 30 more years. That's why I'm running. The skills I have to bring, I like, again, as I said, I engage, but as well, I'm a project manager. And in project management, you have to deal with all different types of personality. You have to deal with people at different skill levels in order to come to a consensus to get the end result. As well, I'm on the board for many organizations. I actually received um, an offer before I came to this meeting to be on another board for a young ladies mentoring program in this community. Um, I'm on the Kansas City Falcons. Uh, we're putting together our 501c3 now. We're starting up organizations. I'm a part of Camps for Kids, which is an organization that um, provides grant funding for camps for children in the camp community to attend camp in the summer. Thank you. At large candidate, Lynette C. Smith, why are you running for the Kansas City School Board? And what skills do you bring to the position? Again, my name is Lene C. Smith. I'm running for Kansas City School Board not only because I am a parent, but also I'm a community member. Uh, one thing that sparked my interest in running was when they shut down Blitheim, my house lost $40,000 in value. Now, that was all the equity we had in our home. I feel bad for the people who did not have $40,000 in equity in their home, and yet they don't have any kids in the community, in the school district, because now they're stuck there with their house upside down. Um, what I bring, uh, what what skills do I bring? Like I said, I'm a parent. I, I'm a parent of a child who they told me was not gifted. She was a DF student. I took her home. I educated her over the summer for an hour a day. She went back to Lincoln Middle, and the, subsequently for the next year and a half that she was there, she was the number one student with no less than 101% in each class. This young lady went on with me helping her and, and uh, what, what, supplementing her education, she went on to score 26 on her ACT first time looking at it. She also got $450,000 in scholarships to college. All of this from a young lady who tested, not gifted. She, uh, I, took, I do that with other people's children, and people have asked me to write down how I do it. I don't know how I do it. I tell people God gives it to me. But I do believe that my ability to work with the young people and understand where they come from, also my ability to work with parents who are frustrated and keep them calm, enables me to be able to sit on this board successfully. I also work uh, very closely with teachers and have been told by many teachers and administrators that I do have their So that's why I'm working. <laughs> Next is Paige Long Swearingen at large. Why are you running for the Kansas City School Board and what skills do you bring to position? You have two minutes. I have taught for 25 years in rural Missouri, in the suburbs. I taught at Centralia in the hinterland. I taught Blue Springs in the suburbs. And I've been a Kansas City resident for almost 40 years. So I know what's going on overall. The reason I'm running is because I bring that experience plus the experience of being the past president of the whole person and a governance board. I understand it. I know what it work, how it works. I hope it does help that get across that it's the CEO or the superintendent that has to be kept in check. He, and he's doing a good job with the parameters that the board has given him or her, then that will work. The idea is, is that I bring some other skills that I have taught for these years, and I've had students come back to me and tell me that, that they were happy that I did this because one student I remember very well kept being absent, and I kept saying, that you need to be here. He finally started going, and then when he got a job, he said, that was the reason I kept it. So the little things work, and I appreciate being here. I thank everyone that's been involved in it. The idea is I care. I know all of these people care, but I think I can do it. Leah Webster, 
Why are you running for the Kansas City School Board? And what skills do you bring to the position? Two minutes. I think there comes a time where you have to stop complaining and start being engaged. And beyond being engaged, you have to get involved. And I'm being held accountable by my community and by my children to go out and make some difference in their education. And when I look at my peers, my age, and you know what they have going on with their children and why they leave the district, my goal has always been, whether it's the school district and, and doing what I'm doing now, and the things that I've done outside of this, is to figure out a way how to get them back. We need our children. And what was going on now with this accreditation issue, our children are going to leave. And so we really need to figure out a way to resolve this issue, get parent engagement up, and improve achievement with our students. Some of the things that I can bring to the table is, one, I have board experience. And first and foremost, this is the education of the school board. And second of all, I've been engaged in the community, and what I do in my day-to-day -day activities is, as far as my nine-to-five jobs, I'm able to see other things that go on in our community when it comes to jobs and business and how that all connects with education and the children, the next generation that has to come about. Just like I am that next generation of leadership that needs to step up and do something and be a part of it. So my job is to bridge that gap between myself and the children behind me because I'm going to be looking for them to take care of me the same way you're looking for me to take care of you. So that is why I'm running and that's the skill set. Thanks. Sam Mann, yes, why are you running for the Kansas City School Board and what skills do you bring to the position? Two minutes. Yes, uh, I have an undying sacrificial commitment to the urban core of Kansas City, Missouri. Um, when a child walks into the early childhood development of St. Mark's Church, the child brings with it every major social and cultural problem of our society. I know how to administer programs and put programs together that can address that child, bringing every one of those problems into that community center. And that is the nature of what it takes to, ed to uh, educate the children of the Kansas City, Missouri School District. I know how to administer that. I know how to bring the big three. Uh, environment, academic achievement, and parent involvement. And I'll hold the school district accountable for all three of those as we go. What is that? Go say something else? Yeah, we're doing that. Oh! What did you say? What did you say? You said, hurry up. Next question. I'm going to say that minute, Rosa. I'm going to keep it. I think this question has been answered already, but you feel free to add to it. Uh, start again. Dwayne Kelly, please describe your previous involvement with the Kansas City School District. And the community. Two minutes. Came in in uh, the fall of 62. Um, after about five years or so, I uh, worked for Craig Lemon in college. He taught that for 25 years. Um, I taught a variety of classes, kinds of classes sociology, psychology, geography. Uh, uh, general science, earth science. Uh, I've got experience in, in the classroom in a variety of ways. And uh, uh, was that it? What? Please describe your previous involvement with the Kansas City School District and the community. Okay. And, uh, the community and I get along just fine. <laughs> So we've been teaching kids to read and write and add and subtract about 5,000 years. We can just discover this last year or so. And we can do this. It's not that, that tough. We make it tougher than it really is. 
we go on with the kids better than we do the parents. You know, I mean, the kids, uh, the kids catch on quick, fairly quick. And if they don't, they try it again next year. But they do, do well as, as, we, as we come to off. So that's about it. Yeah. Demonte Rochester, please describe your previous involvement with the Kansas City School District and the community. Two minutes. My previous experience with the district is I first ran for the school board in 2000 against Michelle Hensley. And outside of that, I uh, volunteered at my son's school, Phil Sweeney, for some time there. And in the community, um, I did a lot. I worked uh, as customer very well as a for six and a half years. Also worked for Mayor Clear's office for a student, doing uh, uh, hot summer nights. And also did a host of other things in the community that makes me uh, well established for this position. Thank you. Curtis Rogers, please describe your previous involvement with the Kansas School District and the community. As I mentioned, I spent 36 years in the Kansas City, Missouri School District as a teacher and as an administrator. But you know, as I look out over the audience tonight, I see a number of my former students, and I would think that if you talk with them after this program, I think they would give you a good sense of who I was as a teacher. Um, Community-wise, I've been just as active in, in, in my community as I have in the school district. Uh, I've chaired a number of boards. I've been a trustee. I've chaired a number. Of, and I still continue to uh, to sit on many boards. Uh, I see one of my Masonic brothers. I, I'm, I'm a past master of my Masonic lodge. I've been in that particular order for a number of years. So I've served my fraternity and still active in it. But I've served in a number of capacities in my neighborhood, and I still continue to serve. <laughs> Change the order a little bit. I have a question by Madam President. So, go to the at-large candidates, the Vanessa C. Smith, the name, the French. Please describe your previous involvement with the Kansas City School District and the uh, The involvement I have with the Kansas City School District is one that's different from a lot of people here. I was a student of the Kansas City School, Missouri School District, but I am walking, talking proof that if you educate the kids, the education sticks with them. I dropped out of school my junior year to take a sixteen dollar an hour job, which I thought was the most awesome thing someone could give a seventeen year old. Five years later, they had downsized the job. They gave me a real nice severance check, but they downsized the job, and I was without a GED before high school was long. I went back off of the education I received five years without having any education, and in 1998, I was the Kansas City, Missouri School District's uh, GED, uh, Adult Basic Education Coordinator. I was a salutatorian with the score of 310. That's off of not going back to school, so I know what good education can do. I'm also a GYRL president, which is giving yourself real love. My son has an organization called Press People Resolve to Educate and Serve Society. I'm the treasurer of that. They were just honored on the uh, Senate floor by uh, Senator Kiki Curls and honored on the House floor by Representative Brandon Ellington. I also sat on the 2011 Kansas City, Missouri School District Budget Review Committee. Um, I have so much to read it from the paper. I'm uh, the parent liaison currently for Hogan Preparatory Academy, 2010-2011, um, Vice President for University Academy of Charter School. Uh, from 2008 to 2011, I was a member. Um, Foreign Language Academy uh, parent member, University Academy PTSA member, Secretary of Blenheim for three years running, Title I KCMSD treasurer for 2008-2009, President of the Kids Parent Association, Title I very important parent recipient 2007-2008, LCPA uh, Lincoln Prep uh, member, Wendell Phillips parent committee one member, and 2008 June team planning committee. <laughs> Janice Stover, please describe your previous involvement in the Kansas City School District and the community. Thank you. 
I haven't been involved in anything that has been moving in this district for the last three years. My involvement, again, began with my family asking me to step in, but my involvement district-wide really began on July 17, 2009. This young man was killed three houses down from my, or three houses down on my block. I had never experienced that as a child, and I couldn't believe I was experiencing it at 27 years old. That made me, at that time, go over to Richardson Elementary, where I became a youth friend. I would go up there, I work from home on Tuesdays, I would go in every Tuesday, sit there at lunch, help the kids out, um, help the teachers and anyone else out. From there, it seems like I just got immersed in everything else that was going on. I've been, again, on the Ojima parent group. I then went to the DAC and learned that every school in this, this district it has issues. Parents at every school are pretty much saying the same thing. From there, I really started understanding that good schools equals good neighborhoods. So I got engaged in every neighborhood association I could in within you know reach. I've been to Ivanhoe, I've been to Santa Fe, I've been everywhere, talking to people everywhere, trying to understand, hey, is this okay? Why are we going back to business as usual? Again, I'm on the board for the Kansas City Marching Falcons. I'm on the board for um, Kids for Kids. Um, I'm also a part of some other efforts for Bark for Life for the American Cancer Society. I'm starting a foundation here very shortly because my aunt just passed away, who was, was a chair of this district in October for breast cancer. Therefore, I want to get the word out about triple negative breast cancer in the African American and the Hispanic communities. So I'm very engaged, very involved, and there's probably a list of other organizations that I have on my dry erase board at home that I can't even think of right now. Thank you. Damn man, please describe your previous involvement in Kansas City School District and the community. Uh, I've been involved as parent, pastor, and marcher. Uh, a parent, uh, a pastor, that involved a whole lot of children, uh, children of the pastor in the, uh, in the school district. Uh, uh, I, I've been chair. I am chairman of the local chapter of Southern Christian Leadership Conference. I was chairman of the Housing Authority of Kansas City, Missouri. I was executive committee of Truman Medical Center and founded an organization called Reframing the Dialogue on Race in America. Um, I was the assistant that I, I actually felt like I was her, her staff member for Principal Yvonne Wilson at Whitman School uh, and as I chaired the PAC uh, organization there for several years. Uh, I was very glad when I that job was over because she she really worked me very well. Compared to everybody else, I don't have that much, but I have done a lot in that sense. First off, I have taught 11 years at Central High School. My daughter graduated from Central High School. I am now a youth friend and go to Carver every week and tutor. I am also, in, as far as the community, I'm on the historic Mannheim Park Board. I've, been, I've basically have been trying to get into the community a lot more. I live at 42nd and Tracy. I've been living in the area for a long time. The idea is I care about this community. And I've done a lot of things outside there, such as I brought up a lot about the whole person, which is, is, is the Center for Independent Living, which is, again, I just found out somebody, that they, Chase State has built a campus, all universal design. The, the, the person that, that did this was out with his wife who was in a wheelchair. And someone came up to her, came up to him and said, we don't want you in this neighborhood because you're going to bring down the prices. This is the kind of thing that's going on everywhere. It's not only race, it, it's for people with disabilities and this. We need to do something about that, and I hope that I can. Overall, I want to be somebody for the district. 
Webster. Sam Webster. We describe the previous involvement of the Kansas City District and the community. My previous involvement with the school district, um, of course, I graduated from Lincoln. I'm a product of the school district. I was around when there was some downsizing of the schools, and I had the personal effect of it. When I came home in 2005, 2006, as a mother, I began to get more involved because now my son is affected by the education. And I began to get more involved in his school, more involved with his education personally at home. And I'm proud to say that I have a first grader, seven years old, that can do division through the majors and can read in the third grade. And I want to see that more with all the children in the district. My involvement with the committee is much greater than that of the school district. I've done a lot of things where I'm involved with a lot of young professional groups. I'm involved with a lot of things that go on with job creation, just through my job and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I have a holistic view of what this city is doing and what needs to take place in education in order for the children to catch up, in order for the city to keep moving. There was a time when I went to, I got invited to send an alternative to come speak to some children. And the whole point was for them to interview community members and kind of see what they do. So I said, okay, when these children come talk to me, you know, they would say, okay, what do you want? What do you like to do? So there was a young man sitting in front of me. He was like, I just like to sleep. And I like destroying stuff. I said, okay, you like destroying stuff? He said, once you get into demolition. I said, when it comes to construction, the demolition man has to come and destroy everything. He's the first one on the job. He's the first one to get paid. He sat up. And he was like, I didn't think about it like that. And I was like, well, sometimes you got to talk about it to know what's going on. I said, but you got to get out there. You got to see what's going on. And it's a bigger world for you. So that's my problem with the school district. And that's my problem with the community. That's what I can bring. I'd like to say uh, good evening to all our candidates, and we're going to switch gears just a little bit. Our next series of questions, you'll have one minute to answer, and they've all been collected by our audience tonight. Um, and I'd like to say to the audience, we've been kind of going through the questions, so we're not picking and choosing, but we're just trying to make sure that the questions haven't been answered already to make better use of our time. Our first one-minute question will be directed to Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers, what do you believe is the biggest issue facing the district, and how do you propose to solve it? I think the biggest issue facing us now is property accreditation. Uh, there are 14 standards that the school district of Missouri must meet. Kansas City has three. But I think the good news is, is that I think we have an opportunity to, to pick up additional three by the summer which could bring us back to provisional uh, accreditation. I think that's the biggest issue that we're facing right now. Uh, I know it takes 14, but six will bring us to provisional, additional three will bring us to full accreditation. I think that's the biggest issue that's facing the district right now. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Mr. Rochester, same question. You have one minute. What do you believe is the biggest issue facing the district, and how do you propose to solve it? Uh, again, I'm going to echo what Mr. Rogers said. Accreditation is our biggest issue. And first of all, what I've been doing is start off in the schools and let the principals take over the schools and aboard it and aboard an administration to support the principals and let us have strong, strong leadership in the schools. And hopefully, we can start from there and make the impact. Thank you. Ms. Webster, same question. What do you believe is the biggest issue facing the district and how do you propose to solve it? Of course, the biggest issue is accreditation. And how do we solve it? The accreditation is going to be a mass exit of students and a mass drain of money out of the district. And I believe that we can solve that, or what the solution could be is some type of local control, site administration, and parent engagement practices. Mr. Kelly, in his recent State of the State address, Governor Nixon expressed a commitment to continued level funding for public schools and to finding a way to apply the foundation formula fairly and predictable. Our question tonight is, do you have any thoughts about how this might be accomplished? What additional measures should the board be considering to increase revenue and decrease spending? That's a box. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been talking 
increase the money for years. So if you go on down for it, listen to this, you get used to lots of talk and not call it much money. Um, one thing we can do to increase money right now, get some changes like you increase the cigarette tax. We get the lowest tax out of 50 states and we can jack it up a dollar. We get you know, for every pack of cigarettes, we can get money. Um, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, so uh, there's lots of ways you know, we can increase taxes. You know, and, and overall, you don't get anything. There's no free lunch. You know, that's what everybody likes to get something for another. It doesn't work. It's not out there. And so, you know, anything we do. Uh, there's lots of things we can do that help. Anything we can do will be opposed by somebody. Thank you. Ms. Culver, same question. You have one minute. Would you like for me to repeat all of it or just the <laughs> In his recent State of the State address, Governor Nixon expressed a commitment to continued level funding for public schools and to finding a way uh, to apply the foundation formula fairly and predictable. Do you have any thoughts about how this might be accomplished, making the foundation formula more fair and predictable? What additional measures uh, should the board be considering to increase revenue and decrease spending? Well, this is very new to me, but I will say I do understand that one of the biggest things that we face in this district is engagement and conversation about education. And I believe that from the board standpoint, what we can do is work and collaborate with the city to bring more people back into the city to work on increasing revenue in the district. I see a lot of vacant homes in the neighborhoods, especially in my neighborhood. And I would like for more young people like me to move back to the city. Um, there's people that I encourage all the time to move here, and their kids are very, very young, two, three, and four years old, and they're very concerned about the accreditation and everything else that's going on. So I believe that as long as the board is, we're collaborating with the city, we are able to bring more people back here that will help out. Mr. Rogers, same question. You have one minute. Okay. Could, could you repeat that? Sure. Well, how about if I do the last two pieces, okay. which is the question itself? Do you have any thoughts about how this might be accomplished, making the foundation formula fair and predictable? What additional measures should the board be considering to increase revenue and decrease spending? Okay. I think two things. Uh, we haven't had a levy passed in Kansas City since 1968, and I'm not sure our community has an appetite for increasing levy, so I think we have to look at other sources. I really think it's a political issue in terms of, uh, of funding. I think we have to engage our legislators. I think we have to engage our state senators, uh, making sure that they go to the legislature. That's a political funding. is, is a political uh, is a political question. I think we have to engage our legislators to make sure that they can the plan feel fair for everyone to make sure that all districts are funded fairly including Kansas City. So I think we need to certainly uh, talk with our legislators about it. increasing revenue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Swear, how would you address attendance and dropout rates? The basic way would be to have more money so that you can have programs that are okay. In other words, we've lost a counselor every other week and it's harder. In other words, we did have a counselor last year for every week. And it, and she was there the whole time. Now we cut back. So the idea is, is that needs to be addressed. The idea of engagement with students so they want to be in class would be another way. The idea of making school not a punishment but something that's going to be there for them. And if, and if you take the pressure, and I really believe this, off the teachers, you would get a lot better way of dealing with this. In other words, the top, it all goes down until you get to the teacher who gets everything put on, on her or him. And that's my feeling is you can do it. Thank you. Reverend Mann, same question. 
We have one minute. How can you address attendance and the dropout rates? I want to talk about debt taxation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a school that's very successful in our district. Am I right or wrong? Yes. Yeah. A school. Drop out. Attendance. We got a good school, a good model there. I would say let's study that. And the thing I think is important there is the, the amount of community involvement in that school and the amount of attention that parents give to that school. And, you know, we might read, we might look at this notion of contract schools for our neighborhoods so that our neighborhoods are involved in these schools and they are taking care of these schools. Uh, I just suggest that as one way that we, we, we might do that. I believe in the big three. Environment, educational uh, achievement, and parent involvement. And I think those contract schools go a long way to get the neighborhoods back involved in the schools, which will indeed keep the children there, I think. No time. I got some out of there for Miss Smith, the same question. How would you address attendance and dropout rates? Well, I wouldn't like to say that's my area of expertise, but that's my area of expertise. Um, not only was I dropped out, I dropped out, like I said, for financial reasons, because I wound up making double what my mom was making at that time. So it benefited me more to make that $16, $17 an hour. So what I would propose is that we work with businesses in, in the community that will give the students good jobs in order to keep them here. Also, the troubled students who are getting suspended 10 days at a time and 5 days at a time, 3 days at a time, open ISS back up. If you keep the kids in the school, you will be able to get the money for the uh, behinds in the seats. Excuse my language, I'm sorry. Um, open up alternative schools. Like I said, partner with businesses that will give students the jobs. I think we have a model of that for the school over there on Armour at Redemptorist Center. They do that with their students all the time. They make good money. Uh, put sports, academic, and athletic uh, activities back in school. If you give the kids something to come to school for, guaranteed they'll stay. Ms. Kelly, same question. We have one minute. How would you address attendance and dropout rates? Well, I tried to address that while I was in class. I talked to kids about dropping out and losing over a lifetime of $14 million more now than what I've been. Uh, there is nothing they can do with the high school as long as they couldn't do without one. So stay with it. And, you know, as they go out, they want, they want what money can buy, but if you can't get money, you can't buy it. There's still no free lunch. Uh, and, you know, you talk to them and try and explain that what they they think is, is tough really isn't that tough, you know. And we wish you'd have a call them over and go out and talk to people that work for 30 years and see what they think is tough. So, you know, it, it's... Um, Society has stomped out a lot of the curiosity that kids are born with. They're born with curiosity. And, you know, when you come to school, it's, it's still there somewhere. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Rogers. With the district facing so many problems, do you have the time to serve and attend the many necessary meetings? Well, come on, come on. I hate to interrupt, but I think everybody should be treated fairly. Mr. Rogers has been called on every time for every question. But I think everybody should have a good opportunity to speak. Okay. Who wants to answer? You know, I live in this neighborhood. I live just right up the street. I live in Kansas City, Missouri School District all of my life. Uh, children is my passion. And uh, I make time. You make time for things that you want to do. You make time for things that, that's necessary and that you think is important. So I've always tried to make the time for those things about what's important. Our children are our future, and they are really important to me. 
Thank you. Mr. Rochester, same question. With the many, with the district facing so many problems, do you have the time to serve and attend the many necessary meetings? I think that we sitting on different, different other boards and different other organizations in this community will give me apple time to spend that sorry time dealing with, especially dealing with the state of the district in. This will be the number one priority to make sure that we spend more time here to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Thank you. Ms. Webster, same question. Absolutely. Like Mr. Roberts said before, if you want to make time for something, you're definitely doing it. And I don't think there's anything more important than education because it has such a huge ripple effect on everything else in my community. Thank you. Mr. Swearer, same question. I would make the most of it. The, the time that I would spend would even become more so than I do now. And that I would be concentrating on making sure that things are done, including getting up to the legislature and doing something up there all the time. Ms. Colga, Yes, I do believe I have the time. I actually probably work on the school district issues more than I actually work on work for my 40 hour week job. It's 5 a.m. in the morning to about midnight. Anybody can reach me, call me, even during throughout the day. So I do have the time. I have two or three calendars that it's all together, so yes. Mr. Mann, earlier you, know, you mentioned parent, parental involvement. How would you increase parental participation and community involvement in the education process in Kansas City schools? Well, I think I mentioned this notion of, of, of neighborhoods that, uh, and uh, a contract school like ACE is, where it involves parents on the board and parents guiding the school. Uh, I would also uh, do uh, events. I mean, if, you know, um, I, I want to bring uh, athletics and, uh, and arts back to our school. Uh, I think that, that that's something that's totally missing. This, this sense of pride, this sense of, you know, community gathering together. And this always brings parents out. I know when we at the Child Care Center, we do right there on 12th Street, we do Four productions a year. Thirty seconds. I got one minute left on the other side. <laughs> four productions a year, and when we do those productions, it's full of you in there. I mean, everybody's in there, and parents are involved, and you begin to engage the parents, you know, in those places where their children are performing. So I think that I would add some. Now, some people say you have a chicken there for folks. You know, let them come in, you give them a chicken. No, I ain't exactly for that. I mean, that's important. But the point is, uh, uh, you know, to make the, get the parents so proud of their children and so proud of their schools that, in any events like that. Thank you. Ms. Smith, same question. Um, that's something that we uh, did, especially at Blenheim. Uh, one of the things that we did do, we had what we call dogs, which was dads on guard. We had one of the highest population of fathers involved in the school because we included the dads. We also did events, like uh, Pastor said, we did events that made sure that the people would come see their children. Here's another thing, when our parent involvement began to fall off, because a lot of people were having financial crisis and they said their gas wasn't there, I proposed, and it worked very well, a $25 gas card for getting them to the parent meeting, and it worked. Well. Ms. Webster. What is the importance of actually visiting the schools in your district, and how often do you intend to visit the schools? One minute. I think it's very important to visit the schools in my district just to understand what your issues are that are going on. And if I was able to get on the board, I would have to say that at least once a month, we should just I would go out and visit all the schools, talk to the parents, talk to the teachers, at least notify them on the comments that they know. And understand the issues and bring it back to the board and make sure that it is. Thank you. Mr. Swearinger, can you answer that question, please? Say it again. What is the importance of actually visiting the schools in your district and how often do you intend to visit the schools? The idea is that in large, that would be a large group. So I don't think I could do it every month to all of them, but I would intend to break it up so that it would be there. I'd like to talk to the teachers how they feel, the principals. I'd like to talk to the people in the neighborhood. This is the way 
you get to know what's going on, and even talk to the students. For the students are the important thing. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, same question, please. When I go back to school, I get to the teachers are, the teachers know me. I see a lot of these folks in the school district is amazing stuff. So, uh, I like to leave people alone unless they have a problem. If they have a problem, I suppose to call. But I, I check around, I hear people talking to me. So I get to the school sometimes to see some people at the meetings. No, whatever it is. Mr. Rochester. Rochester, what will you do to stop or help to keep children in school? Children are refused admission who have no home address. In other words, they're homeless. How would you help them? Well, first of all, I believe that we need to engage in the community more as the community's input on, on a lot more issues. And then I feel like that way, you know, we have a cohesive issue, I mean, effort in trying to address all the kids' needs who's not in school and trying to make a more cohesive effort between the city, state, county, and state. Thank you. Ms. Colbert, can you answer that same question? <laughs> What will you do to stop or help to keep children in school? Children are refused admission who have no home address. Well, I believe, again, engaging with the neighborhood associations is, is very highly important in that regard. I believe it's important that the kids are in a safe environment and that they do go to school. And if they don't have the home addresses, I believe that's where the school district or parents and families need to lean on us in the community. We can also, or I know I spoke with a community member over the last few months who had talked about setting up a home for children that were homeless or in transition because of the three or 4,000 students that we have currently in the district who don't have homes. And reaching out to collaboration and community partners in that regard would help decrease the amount of children that are not admitted. In regard to making sure that they're actually at school, that is, up on, that is a negative up on the parents and the community to make sure that the expectation from the community is that you are to be in school during certain hours. Thank you. And I'm going to solicit help from our chair to see if we have more time. It's, it's 8 o'clock. Is, is this for one hour, Mr. Downey? Yes. Okay. That was the plan. That was the plan. We did have one question from a member of our audience who had asked if our candidates here tonight are write-ins or on the ballot. And my understanding that each candidate here tonight are write-ins. That is correct. Turn it over to yeah. you. On this uh, write-in candidate business, there might be other people that will be writing in on April 3rd. That's the rule. They, don't, they did not have to report to the election board or the school district. They might put their dog's name on there. I don't know. So you need to know your candidate before you go, and you need to know how to write their name on that write-in time. There will be other people, other than these, that will be writing in their name. And guarantee you that. Yes. Well, I talked to the Lex Board. It's my understanding that you can use a paper ballot and write the name in and scan it. Now, I like to use the uh, touch screen. Somebody will be there to help me. They told me that. Are you talking about the uh, how to vote? Oh, no, I don't oh. want to do how to vote. But the list of people uh, for. For me to be local at church and tell them why. The best thing for you to do is to find out who the candidates are and make sure you know who that person is when they get there. Now, there will be some people. Well, well if they have volunteers to call, they might have something to hand you. A list. 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 In fact, you can write your name on the land 
if you want to vote for yourself. I mean, that's how critical this is. You need to know who you're going to be. Yeah. I would now like to let our president say anything that you'd like to address. And by the way, we can sign you up as members of the NAACP. We would be glad to do so anytime. Madam President. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. First of all, let's give all the candidates a hand. Thank you for sharing and being willing to serve. Because that's so important because I can never remember a time when everybody was writing without your vote. And so we appreciate you and we wish all of you the best. Now, also, we want to thank the committee as well uh, for the work they did. So let's give them a hand. Put Kansas City election board. Just write it in. Don't worry about WMW. And when that screen comes up, red, white, and blue, it's going to say cold off. It's going to say sample ballot. And when you pull up that ballot, you are going to see uh, a couple of people that file and got signatures. The rest of them are going to have a line and says right here. All of you that vote in Kansas City are going to be able to vote for the um, at-large at, at candidates. And then you have to vote for that person in your district. My candidate is already in, so I won't have a fifth district on my back. But I will have at-large there, okay? And I won't be writing in anything else. Then, so pull up that website and study that website, take a look at it.